recently you did a, or was it wasn't recently, when did you do the, the TEDx video for you? About a year ago. Oh, it was recently. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, and I haven't watched the video yet, mm -hmm. but we were talking about it. And you were, you were telling me about some of the, the things that, that you were um, presenting to, to them. Could you, could you tell me a little bit about sure. that? Sure. Yeah. About a year ago, I started at University of Nevada in the School of Journalism is the chair of media entrepreneurship, uh -huh. and um, the people who run TEDx UNR asked me to do a TEDx talk. So um, about and I, you know, they said I could do about whatever I'm passionate about. What's my big idea? The right. one thing right. that's important to me. And when I thought about it, you know, I've been a grammar girl for nine years now. It was eight years then, and when I started. You know, I, I didn't have any exceptional experience. I was a typical writer and editor, and I would look things up in style books myself, and then I just wanted to share that knowledge with people because I felt other people might find it useful too. Right. And over time, I became more interested in the history of language and how language changes. And you can see that like people t can get really worked up about the language rules. They don't like it when the language rules change. And they think that there's something almost morally righteous about the, what the words or the rules are today. Right. And so when things change, people can get really upset. And if you take a longer historical view, you see that language has always been changing, right. especially English, actually. English changes, I think, possibly more than other languages. And so you look back and you say, you know, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, people objected to use, using the word drapes to mean curtains. Like, they got as worked up about that as we get worked up about things today, like maybe someone saying irregardless or ain't. Like, for them, <laughs> drapes was a that fighting was the, point. the hot topic so, idea. Yeah. You know, there was a, a language expert who, like, made up a lot of the rules we use today. Well, one of the rules he made up that fortunately didn't stick is that you shouldn't use the word who to refer to children because he thought who should be referred, reserved for fully sentient beings, and he thought children were fully aware <laughs> and so when you say with whom you're talking to you like thought what? children should be an it or a that instead oh, of a who <laughs> okay I see what you're saying he was, he was basically saying children aren't people <laughs> right right and on what level is this is like when do you qualify yeah right? exactly but like, so you know you look at these rules from the past or things people objected to in the past and you start realizing that you know in 200 years we will probably look as ridiculous as they do now sure for the things we get upset about and so you can take a more re not, not like relaxed but open-minded view about language change. It's a normal thing. It happens. You don't have to love it. You don't have to love every new word. Right. But um, it's, it's a really normal, natural process. And there's nothing morally superior about the words we use today or the rules that we use in standard English.